I'm Chris. And I'm Jesse. And this is Raw and Real Podcast. We are professional photographer and videographers. And we'll be talking about everything photo and video and everything you need to know. That's a thing. But look at all these modes you have. I just feel like it's very much overkill for what anyone ever needs. To ten bit. Like, let's be honest. R5 for any photo needs is already overkill. For sure. Anything, in my opinion, over it's twenty-four megapixels, you, it's already overkill. It's overkill for what? In case you didn't realize, we're talking about why gear doesn't matter or why it does matter. So both are true statements. <laughs> both are very true. It is the age-old question. Uh, because to me, it's like I feel like the only time gear does matter is more applicable to video than it is to photo. Yeah. Because photo, I've I might have shared this opinion already. I feel like if you can't take a good photo with any camera that is out today, you just it's not the camera. Yeah. I hate to say it, but there's really no nice way to say it, but you just suck. <laughs> you just need practice. And the thing yeah. with photography is we all start there. Like, if you look at anyone's like, this is my first pro- professional photo or my first photo with a DSLR, they're all trash. Yeah. They're, you might have a good angle, but as far as, like, how you edited the photo, like, I... I went through a saturation phase. <laughs> like, we're we've all been there. So, like, if you're a beginner, don't get butt hurt from that. Like, we all start from there. Okay, maybe we'll both pull up a photo from our first wedding ever. <laughs> but I'll, we'll put them right here. Yeah, I'll probably put it right here. So, if you're watching this on YouTube, like, you'll have the visual. But like, audio, maybe go just check this episode out just to look at where we're at. Yes. And then this is probably, yeah. This I is, do have to say, though, okay, so I just finished redoing my website. Okay. I haven't, like, officially announced it, launched it, but it's live. But I was looking for photo, and I needed a specific, specific photo for one of the, of the um, for one of the sections of the website. I needed a specific photo about, like, a meeting. And I knew that I took a photo of um, a couple drinking coffee together. But it had been so long, and I had to go through two hard drives to find it. Oh, my. I found the photo. It is from 2018. 2018. I took it with a 5D Mark III and probably some cheap Sigma lens. <laughs> well, not cheap at the time. It was yeah, expensive I mean, at the time, hey. the art series. But um, I found it. I re-edited it, and it fits right in with all my other photos. You would have no idea I took that. See, with it's never with really the shot. Gear. Yeah. Yeah, it's never really like the composition or like the yeah. lighting and stuff like it's usually the editing. Yes. If your editing doesn't get better, that's yes. but the, again, that's not gear related. That's mm-hmm. that's user error. <laughs> like yeah. but like I said, it we all start from there. Cause I've came across some photos <laughs> and I was like, Oh man, somebody paid you for this. Yeah. Thank goodness they did, because I don't know if I'd continue, <laughs> but yeah. There's some t- some stuff you'll look back on years, maybe even just months. There's some people that make very fast improvements, and there's nothing wrong with that. But yeah, I feel like I was not one of those people. <laughs> I was very much a trial and error person because I yeah. went through like the whole, you can make fun of it all you want because I know a lot of Canon people don't go through this phase, but the Sony phase, and you automatically know what I'm talking about, yeah. the teal and orange, we all go through it. It's fine. <laughs> It's just a Sony thing, okay? I'm with you. I went through, what did we list off? Yeah. Seven or eight wow. Sony cameras that I went through? Trust me. Um, we go through its face. The good thing is there's help out there for you. Yeah. And you can always be a recovering Sony yeah. user. I, I'm a kid <laughs> user now. <laughs> I'll still use whatever there is. It doesn't, photo-wise, like I said, it really doesn't matter. And this episode is brought to you by Canon R3. Yeah, we're shooting on the R3, a very... Very overly capable camera yeah. for for this, Podcast but camera. Yeah. <laughs> that brings like me to a good little thing. Um, use what you have. Yeah, I don't like. Well, I did want to start. Have, so we do have questions. Um, <laughs> so. 
when I first started, so I started in high school. I was 13 years old, got my first camera, and I did film class in high school. It took four years of film, and I got all of my badness out then. Your experimentation in high school when you I'm came, jealous. okay? And I became good at the technical side of things. So I knew why we did certain things. I knew, like, I, I knew the technical side, right? Yeah. And I got out of photo for a little bit, but once I got back in it, I already had the, te the technical aspects. I knew, you know, all the rules of it, and I was able to quickly get up to speed with, you know, newer gear. I'm jealous. <laughs> and then once you become good at what you have to be, you learn when you can break the rules. And that's kind of the rules in photography are there so that you have a starting point. And then once you know what the rules are, you can break them. Yeah. But you can't break them until you know what they are and you know how to use them. Yeah. So don't break the rule of thirds until you know what the rule of thirds is Yeah. and how to use it. Then you can start breaking Or a split it. composition or like, you know... Like like my teacher said, never put subjects in the middle of the frame, ever. And I did it for a while, but then... Oh, I do it all the time. Now you have to. Like, yeah. I mean, that's how you People cool want photos. that. Yeah. People want it. Yes. So it's like leading lines, all that stuff. Yeah. But, I mean, this pretty much goes over, like, question number one, which is, does your gear actually matter? And, like I already stated, like, photo-wise, I really don't think so. Like... Yeah, it matters to an extent. People make beautiful yeah. work with some of the cheap... It makes me sometimes want to sell my gear because I'm like, this yeah. per this person made this photo off of a plastic toy camera, and I'm struggling with a sixty four hundred dollar camera. <laughs> How the heck? Like, there's you'll always come across stuff like that, which is kind of discouraging sometimes. But yeah, I think that reiterates that whole statement where your gear really doesn't matter. But that's where I. I always draw the line. It's photo wise. Yeah. Because video wise, you're going to have limitations. Obviously, there's to a point where gear does limit you and gear does matter. Like for me, I'm a hybrid shooter. I hate that term. <laughs> but like, that's yeah. really only a way to describe it because I've shot tons of weddings just by myself. And the only reason I had two cameras most of the time was. Because I needed one for photo and I needed one for video. And I would literally shoot the same moments back and forth. And so I'm always juggling. And that got really irritable to me. So I would always try to hunt down the perfect camera yeah. that did both. And most of the time, I was always limited by video capabilities. It was never the photo side of it. Because like video-wise, it's like, oh, that's for cinema cameras. Thank goodness everyone nowadays has... The capability to kind of like easily do both. Yeah. I kind of grew, I said grew up. Um, Hold I on. Say, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause you. Okay. So I feel like I do agree with you for the most part. However, for video, I feel like a lot of those limitations that we think we have are our self, whatever. Like, like we put those limitations on ourself. And so... I I found out, okay, so there's this videographer. I'm not going to name him, but I think we both know who I'm going to talk about. Probably. I saw his videos, <laughs> and they were really good. I loved them. Like, they have a lot of good support, very successful, and um, he does really great work. And then I saw some photos of him working, and he was using T3Is, these really cheap Canon T3Is. He had a bunch of them with some just random lenses, okay? And it was producing really great content. And it's all, you know, only in only in 1080 HP, but 1080 HP? Did I say HP? HP. We're not talking about Pokemon. No. 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 1080p. Not health points. It was only in, <laughs> only in HD. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. And, um, but it was really good. And he was using crappy Canon cameras. So when it comes to content, I would agree with you. 100%. It was because, like, when it comes to films. digital, like, when you're just consuming things through digital, there really is an element. I will yeah. say that. I'll agree with you there. Um, digital content, like, whether you're making stuff for Instagram, TikTok, <laughs> the fact that TikTok. that's business is, is, it is what it is. It shows where we're going as a society. But even, like, YouTube. I feel like with those, with social media, 
you can use whatever the heck you want. But I feel Android like I feel like we're limited, right? Because I, I I feel like I need a video camera that can at minimum do four K. And if that video camera doesn't do four K, I'm not going to use it. But there is like so like, and I I can never change. I can't do this. I I edit in four K. I export in four K. I deliver in four K. But does it matter? I don't know that it does right now. I was watching football the other day on a 70 inch TV. And it's 10. On, and it was 720. 720, even better. On my 70 inch 4K TV, I was watching 720p. I don't have a TV over 50 football. On, <laughs> it was on antenna. And it looked fine. I can't, I'm, I don't have glasses anyway right now, so I can't see if, if it's blurry or not. But, but that's what I'm saying. Like, th- does it really matter if stuff's in 4K? You know, I don't it's know not it necessarily does. the resolution that I'm talking yeah. about. Mine's my concern is mainly like time restrictions. Yeah. So my biggest thing was the time limit on things. Like, so we mainly do weddings. That's our main source of income. So like, we're obviously looking for the best camera that can suit our needs there. Yeah. So for me, when it comes to a ceremony. And I'm shooting a Catholic wedding. 30 minutes, that's a joke. Like, yeah. if you shoot a Catholic wedding and it's 30 minutes, like, who's your clientele? I, I would love love to talk to them. Yes. Because, like, Catholic weddings at a minimum are an hour, if not two hours. And if you're watching this and you're wanting to get into videography and you're like, wait, what? Yeah, that's something you have to think about. Like, because if you have said B camera over in the corner and let's say it's an EOS R because that's what you could afford that's 30 minutes and then it's just going to stop and then if you don't sit there and think about like that camera needs to be I need to hit record again but let's say you have to literally leave where you're at and something important's about to happen well now you don't have any footage of what's about to happen if you go click that Yeah. so like to me cameras do prohibit a lot of like necessary needs when it comes to wedding but keep in mind that is from a hybrid standpoint like obviously if you're buying a cinema camera okay there's there obviously isn't a limitation or a camcorder or anything to that kind of extent like if you're buying more of a video centered camera obviously those issues don't apply to you but most of us i feel like nowadays are photographers getting into video yeah and so with that in mind, like, you've already spent thousands of dollars on the gear that you have for photos. Why can't you just use that? And so that's where those video limitations come in. Yeah. That's where I see the error, which is really the only reason why I have this R3. Is- and so, kind of follow that up. So, gear doesn't matter to an extent. Like, not, like now, we both have cameras that can pretty much do whatever we want to do. Pretty much, yeah. Even though I still want more. I still want <laughs> different cameras. Yeah. You know, I can still do everything I need to do with what I have. But what it, like, when gear does matter is that you have to know how to use your gear. And your uh-huh. gear has to be basically an extension of yourself when you're a creative. And so if you don't know not necessarily even how to know like how to use the gear, just you have to be able to be comfortable with the gear. Like for example, I had an R3, right? Mm -hmm. And I loved it, I mean it was a great camera, it did more than I needed it to do. It does a lot. But (laughs) it just didn't feel right. Like it didn't feel comfortable with me using it. So I wasn't as comfortable using the R3 as I was my R5 for photo or video. And so I found myself not getting the footage I wanted to get so I did it I used it on like a little styled shoot and I just I didn't I didn't feel creative with it which is kind of you know weird to say but yeah you know it it just it didn't feel right it was a little bit different in how I had to use it in the footage I was getting and so you know I made the decision not to keep it and I still have only my r5 you know but Mm -hmm. I it just feels right and so once I kind of got the R6 and the R5, they just feel good in my hands. They, f- they feel right. And I can get whatever I want to get with them. And so I think that's 
when gear matters. And just the same, like you need a lens that mat, like your lens matters in the sense that yeah. you need to know how to use that lens and when to use it and why to use it. Um, yeah. So that's like how I feel gear matters is you have to be able to be completely comfortable so that when you're in a high stress situation like a wedding, you're kind of just able to do stuff without having to really think about it. Yeah. So you can think about what you're creating instead of like how you're going to create it. I would agree. And I usually think both of us would agree that a lot of the times your lens pretty much matters more than your camera body oh, does. Yeah. yeah. Because once you spend... That's it, your first upgrade. It hurts to spend. That's your first upgrade. Always. Agreed. Because, like, it, I would say that's the most painful expense. Because you're like, yeah. oh, but it's just the lens. That lens will outlast any camera body yeah. that you buy from here on out. Like, if you're investing in the Canon system and you're buying an R, yes, the RF lenses are expensive as crap. And sometimes they are way over. Like, I'll probably never buy the 28 to 70. He has a 28 so He loves that lens. Me? My wife loves it. Overkill. I, I will probably never, ever touch that lens. Why? Because to me, it's, A, it's freaking heavy as crap. That thing is a yes. tank. And B, I, I need stabilization because I shoot a lot handheld. I shoot way more handheld than I, th- I Honestly, hold on. on. I think the fear of using the 28 to 70 is that... Once you use the 28 to 70, you don't ever use another lens. You don't go back. And that's kind of the main thing is that once you use it, you're not ever going to use anything else. I've and that's like that. the fear of it is that I, I started using it. It's so expensive. It and I loved expensive. it. And I was like, man, I need to get my wife to use this, you know, so that she'll actually use it because I love primes. Even though the 28 to 70 is like three primes in one. True. I loved using it, but I was like, I wanted to use my 50, you know. I love that 50. Yeah. 50 so. Cool. I let my wife use it, and it hasn't left her camera since. Yeah. I haven't used the lens since I let her use it, like, two years ago. So, yeah. I mean, my wife says the same thing about that. She loved... We had it on pre-order for the longest time, but literally my wife used the 35. Yeah. And it's funny because it's... it's That's where it goes back. It's like, does gear matter? Like, because I could probably sit there and spend a good two grand... On finding her the 35 mil 1.4 EF version two, and throw and an e, EF to RF adapter, and tell her to use that, she probably will get the same shots. Yeah, and it just goes to show the gear you're comfortable with, because the gear she has now is an R6 with the 35 RF, and she loves that setup. You cannot convince her otherwise to use something else, because even after we're done with like portraits and we go to start doing like ceremony or vice versa the only time she uses another lens is for the ceremony yeah as soon as we're done with the ceremony she slaps that 35 back on and that's the rest of the day so like it really just goes to show like it really matters like what do you do make sure you're buying the appropriate gear for what you're doing and that's what really matters gear not so much more so matters like are you buying the right thing for your job yeah. To execute it to the best of your ability. So, like, we have questions, but we really answered majority of them. But, like, However, there's... though, you have to be confident in using what you're using. So, oh, yeah. Practice for example, the crap out of... if I was at a wedding and I saw a photographer walk in with a T3i, I would be judging them very hard. I don't judge I'd anymore. I'd be like, what are you doing? I don't. I, I used to. But I then, if they that. started being confident with it, you know, that's, yeah. it's totally different. Yeah, like, well, off that, I stopped judging people a long time ago because we, we, I used to attend this thing called Community Sunrise where a bunch of photographers would meet up for Sunrise. I remember that. Me, nine times out of ten, would have the most expensive gear there. So, like, what the average person would think, be like, he definitely should have the best shot. And I would say, well, that's, this is going to sound arrogant, but a lot of the times I do feel like I ended up with some of the best shots that I could have ever gotten. But a lot of the times my friends would post their photos and then I would look and it'd be like, this girl has a $400 setup. That is the body, lens, SD card, everything she has is the $400 setup. So cheaper than what you can buy at Target right now. Target, like accessible to anyone. And there's some photos that she would post and I'm like, this is better than 
my $3,000 setup. Yeah. This hurts. But she, it's because she knew her gear. She mastered it before she bought anything else. And this is a person who's like, they literally, that's what they could afford. So that's what they bought. But they use it to their best ability and learned it like front and back and was still taking better photos than me. And like... They probably edited it on their phone. On yeah, random app. I, they did. Yeah. On their like, I think it was like an iPhone <laughs> SE at the time. Like She only shot in JPEG. Yeah, it, yeah. It, stuff like that like hurts. It's like, it dang, I spend so much money on gear. And it's like, I feel like you reach a certain point where it's like, whatever job you have, however much money you're willing to spend on it, is only going to make your job easier. That's where gear matters to me. Because like, I bought this R3 because the autofocus is insane. It's absurd. Like I can tap and I don't have to worry about anything else. Like the battery life, the no record limit, the image quality, the like, yeah. it just does everything I'll need it ever to do. So that way when I go into post, I have zero worries. I know exactly what I got. I didn't have to try as hard. I got to tap and let the camera do everything else. In my opinion, that's what you're paying for. You're paying to make your job easier. Yeah. Not because you can't use what you already have. It's just to make the job easier. Yeah. So when people keep saying, like, your gear definitely matters, not really. Yeah, I no. see people make phenomenal stuff with their freaking iPhone, and it hurts because I pull out my iPhone feeling inspired. And I'm like, yeah, that, su that sucks. I'm just going to grab my can, and I paid money and, for it. And people don't realize this, but when you're in the business, when you're in weddings, and you know other photographers, know other filmmakers who do weddings and, and sessions and stuff, you start to realize that, to and like, like we all have professional gear now, but yeah. not everybody uses R fives and A seven S's and all you know, yeah. all of the top gear. Some of them are still using like a five D Mark three, yeah, from like freaking forty years ago. Yeah. It feels like that's how. <laughs> yeah, it is. right. And I still know, I mean, top photographers in the country who are using, yeah. you know, twenty year old cameras, and producing just the same quality of of work that we have, and yeah. so. 100%. The the thing is when you're you're paying, like I, I've had a couple clients who are just like, oh, well, we know, you know, once you put wedding attached to something, the prices are going to skyrocket, you know, and people feel like wedding photographers are charging, you know, thousands of yeah. dollars just, just because it's a wedding. And that's not necessarily the the reason, but when you get into weddings and you get into the thousands, you know, $4,000, $5,000 mark you're paying for creativity. You're not paying yeah. for us to take photos of you. You're paying, you're paying, Tang. you're paying us to create art for you um, during your wedding. That. And so 100%. at that point, like you're not paying for gear. You're paying yeah. for the creativity of somebody. And yeah. that's why like anybody can be a photographer. There's so many like, yeah. I'm a photographer. I got a camera and there is not as many artists out there that are creating you know Search. art because it's so easy to get a expensive camera and produce you know like quality level yeah. photos but you're not getting the creative photos you're not getting the, yeah. the art aspect of it and you're not being able to capture the emotion of a, of a moment because that's where the creativity that's when we come along yeah and that's kind of the difference in you know yeah, I would agree. Like, using gear creatively. Yeah, I would say, like, because there's even a guy that I follow. His field is completely different. He's in conceptual photography. So, like, but he has a very, very distinct style that, like, in my opinion, you have to find him in order to get that look because it's so specific. Like, but the crazy thing is, like, the man uses, I think, an A7R, the original one, a... Sam Ming lens, which I think is maybe like two hundred dollars. He uses some filters, which go ahead and tack on another hundred bucks, and then his garage as his studio. So the man's using literally what he has, but literally his work. I think it's called like the Moody Dark Room. If I can find it, it'll be in the description. But like, I don't know. you're going down there. I'm not putting. Any, I don't know how to do all that. So we're just. 
throw it down there. <laughs> but like his look, like when you see it, you go, whoa. I don't, I don't know anyone who shoots like this. I just I flat out don't. And yeah. it's not with expensive stuff. Like I think the most expensive thing he has <laughs> besides his garage is uh, maybe his light. He, has prob- he probably has a very expensive light to get the shots that he gets. Everything else is dirt cheap. Like you could buy right now you could, and pick up used and start taking very similar stuff. Like that's, I think that's the point we're getting at. It really just depends on what you're really trying to capture and what works best for you. That's really the only time where gear matters to me. I say all this, but then I show up to a wedding with forty thousand dollars of gear. And oh yeah, hundred like, percent. Oh, yeah, like, gear doesn't matter. <laughs> gear doesn't matter, but like it matters to us because like yeah. it makes our job easier. Yeah. That's why it matters to us. Like if I'm out doing just like street photography, gear doesn't matter at all. I take yes, a five hundred dollar setup. I leave this at home. I don't want to. I'm terrified to actually bring this out. Just do street photography, but. I bring a cheap setup, like it's an XT30 Fujifilm with like a hundred dollar lens on it. That's all I take. That's it. There's a few extra batteries, and I shoot on two gig cards, mm. <laughs> just so I don't overshoot, mainly. But yeah, that's it. And so, like, it really, just what's your goal? What are you trying to accomplish? So and is it gonna make it easier? Here. I know, I right? I <laughs> just I put product this here. placement. Yeah. Maybe we should product. We should have put cameras back there for this episode. <laughs> but I would say like we'll wrap up with these last two questions because I feel like they can get pretty in depth, and we've easily answered everything else that I had written down. But like this one is, in my opinion, like a very does gear matter? <laughs> right. So I ran out of record space. I pulled amateur hour for me, but. Uh, my memory card ran out of space, but so we ended up with <laughs> that was crisp. That was probably absurdly loud, though, for any person listening. All right, start it. <laughs> so what we ended up with because I ran out of memory card space, yeah. but this we're gonna wrap up with two more questions, um, and it's should I invest in more expensive gear? And as Jesse is showcasing. And flexing so hard <laughs> um, is should you really invest in expensive gear? And to me, I would answer that with like, yes. if it makes your job easier. Like Jesse obviously likes using multiple camera angles and different things like that. <clears throat> Personally, I don't. I don't want that. So for me, I would rather have just two cameras, the lenses that I need, and call it a day. Yeah. But obviously for Jesse, he would much rather have four <laughs> four cameras loaded up and ready to go. But like that's what makes him comfortable. That's what makes him feel like he's going to execute However, his job. I didn't just start one day and was like, I'm going to go buy a whole <laughs> fleet, fleet of Canon I'm just going to drop a, no. a car price tag <laughs> on just camera gear. Yeah, I'm not even going to add all this. Up. No, please. That, you can add, a, add it up in the comments. Yeah, we'll throw... <laughs> guess, guess the total in the comments, and then we'll, we'll throw the total up here yeah. and let us know if you were right without lying. <laughs> but, so, <laughs> this isn't... Um, this is, like, I didn't need all of this stuff. I love gear, and I love buying new stuff, and I love new technology, I'm like constantly searching for new stuff and I love change. So I didn't need all of this. I was like perfectly good with what I had, but I love new stuff. So I literally like have a business to buy new gear almost, you know? Yeah. And I'm doing well enough to be able to buy all the new gear. So it's just, that's what I love doing, you know? I would definitely say like, don't reach outside of your means. Like if it really puts your financial like sustainability at risk, don't do it. That's just yeah. that's just poor business decision. Don't do that. Obviously try to get what you can. And I would say when it comes to lenses, buy used. They yeah. last forever and most people just take care of it. And there's really no yeah. real necessity to buy brand new unless you're just at the point where <laughs> that sounds so cocky and arrogant. I don't mean it that way, but like 
the point where we're at where we're pulling in enough money to go and invest in more expensive gear and we're yeah. still financially fine. Like, it was okay for us. To us, it was a smart decision. Like, I wouldn't have bought an R3 if I didn't already have the cash to buy it. Like, that just wouldn't be a smart business decision. But I wanted it because it literally checks every single box that makes my life easier yeah. that I'm looking for. So for him, it didn't work. And so um, what I want to say about all this is that when you're first starting out, you need a camera, a lens, and that's kind of all you need. And once you're there, like the biggest thing you can invest in is yourself at that point. So when I first started, I had a T3i and a kit lens. My first investment was like a $300 um, the EF like 50, the right? 50, 50, 50, 50. That was like, so I had that in the Golden. camera. With those two, I was, I did my first, I think five weddings photo wise. And what I invested in was myself. I mean, I bought all the education I can. So I invested more in education than I did gear at that time. And that's kind of, I suggest your first thing. You need to find an apprenticeship. You need to find an internship. You need a second shoot for other people. You need yeah. to find online courses that teach you like real stuff and learn that stuff first, invest in that, and then you can start investing piece by piece. And so for me, <clears throat> I didn't just go like all of a sudden one day want to be a wedding photographer yeah. and buy all this stuff, but it happened at a perfect time for me when I had old gear, Canon, was really going big on their RF and I was like, hey, I'm going to take this moment to sell all of my old EF gear and start completely fresh with all RF. And so that's what I did is... That's a chump. Yes. <clears throat> well, I can't talk. I had the, all of the EF stuff and I had all Sigma lenses and I was at a place where I was very professional in my second or third full-time year of doing this and I needed to buy um, professional like the L series, that red line. Yeah. I wanted to buy yeah, some real, some real lines. lenses. So, but it was at the time when RF really came out, and I was yeah. said, "Okay, well, I can buy all RF class instead of EF." So I sold all my old Sigma gear and bought all of this. But you can't just do yeah, it right. It just doesn't happen yeah. all at once. Invest in yourself first. Yeah, because I feel like when you invest in yourself, that that where it gives you the skill level to use anything that comes to mind like if you like mini short story i was shooting a wedding go figure um with the sony a7r3 at the time it was a new camera so like there shouldn't be any issues like nothing i had yeah. this was a time where i used gimbals where most people would be like chris you used the gimbal and i'm like wow. yes i did for I a short gimbals. time i love gimbals it was short left but you know <laughs> like that was the go-to camera for the time because it did fo amazing photo in a in really good video and literally i just finished filming the ceremony and then all of a sudden or all of a sudden as my wife would say doesn't really matter um all uh, of a sudden all of a sudden it just it just stops the recording and shuts off and i'm like okay uh that's not what you're supposed to do. Um, I mean, I already had everything else saved, so I start click record, and it does the same thing after a minute. Click mm -hmm. record again after a minute. So I learned, like, okay, it's glitching right at one minute. So if I stop it right before a minute, I'll be okay at least for the rest of this wedding. I'm going to have a pain in the butt when it comes to editing, but I know I can get by in what I can do. And in my opinion, that only comes with experience. Because if you're just buying gear because you have the money but no experience, you're going to run into an issue like that and not know what to do. Yeah. You're going to be shot and go in panic mode because my wife had a shoot that canceled back in Jacksonville. And my wedding was in Orlando, which was two – I think it was around two and a half hours away. So, like, there was no way I was getting my backup camera, mm. which I should have had already. No. Nope. Note to all you... Always have a backup. Always have a backup. That's just rule, rule number one. Just have a backup. But, like, I didn't have that. So I had to make... I had to make do with what I had and figure out everything on the spot and on the fly. 
And thank I, goodness it was family I have a funny photos. Story about backup. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. But like, thank goodness it was during like family photos where I was able to like figure out what was going on. I was just walking around doing B roll anyways, so it was a good time for me for it to happen. Yeah. So I was able to figure it out. Got all the speech. It got everything. Made it work. But if I didn't have experience, it just wouldn't have happened. Just straight. I feel like that happened on the shoot that we did in Tennessee too, or in Georgia. Is it Georgia? Yeah, sure did. Some of those, Wait. I remember something was going on with your camera. Yeah, and that was the A7S III. Yeah. Oh, so different camera. Different camera. Okay. Um, but that one's having problems Still too. Sony. <laughs> what was that doing? That was... I don't know. It was an update, and then I did an update, and, and then it, it was fine. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I just spent this much money on this camera. Do I have any glitches? Yeah. And then, yeah, whenever we made it home, like, updated the camera, it was perfectly fine. So... So yes, invest, definitely do your updates. <laughs> invest in yourself first. Yeah, definitely yourself first. And then I would say to wrap up this whole one would be like, just to kind of help people out. It's like, is there a gear you can actually even cheap out on? Like, is there something that you could just like pinch a penny for the time being and get by with? And I would say photo wise, absolutely. Yeah. Like cheap out on the camera body. <clears throat> Buy a used one. Like, there's absolutely zero reason for you to buy anything new. Especially because, yeah. like, like you explained earlier, like, 5Ds and 5D4s, they're going for a crazy good price right now. Yeah, and they're And amazing. they're phenomenal cameras. People professionally, to this day, use those cameras. So, yeah. I would definitely say, cheap out on the camera body. Lens. Anything you can other get than an icon, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> you can definitely get a more affordable lens. Um, but like we said, like, don't go, don't reach out of your means, but I would say 5D3 and 5D4, best bang for your buck when it comes to like autofocus, just overall camera body for the price that wins. Yeah. I, I would say as a good rule of thumb is like when you're first starting out, buy a body and a lens the first, like your first purchase should be a camera body with a, like a kit lens that is the same price as a wedding that you're booking. That's a, so like that's one of my, all, my first wedding was for my family. It was for my brother mm-hmm. and that was completely free. So I had to buy the camera differently, but like my first paid wedding was $600 and I had a Canon T3i with the kit lens. And I've okay. rented some gear. Renting is perfect for your first few weddings. Yeah. So get your first few weddings for free, right, and rent. You're going to have to pay out of pocket. But it's better that you're paying out of pocket than somebody else is paying for you to do something and mess it up. So Agreed. rent some gear and then start getting some, some cheaper weddings and buy a camera body and kit lens that is the same price as that wedding. So you're putting that entire money back into the business. The next purchase should be a lens worth about the same as your next wedding. So then you'll have a camera body and a good lens. From that, you can start saving up some money to get your first professional body. Get your first professional body, which could be a used Mark III. And then after you get that first full frame camera, you can get some lenses. That's a different... I wanted to ask you a question, but that's... For another episode, Ooh. we'll have that debate because that's just a that's a long one. <laughs> we could go on and on about that, but like, I would say, should we tease it? If you're, what's the question yeah. about? Is full frame really worth upgrading from APS-C? Mm. So, it's a good question. Yeah, that's for another one. But uh, I would say, if you're ready to make a professional jump to a professional setup. If you are a Canon, I would definitely say an R6 with a 24 to 105 f4. Make sure you get the L f4. You can easily shoot an entire wedding with that kit because they're both yeah. super reliable. They're both weather sealed because at weddings, crap happens and anything is thrown at you. And that is just a, it's not a phenomenal kit. I mean, the R6 is a phenomenal camera, but the 24 to 105 will give you everything you will ever need from a wedding. And like the R6, in my opinion, low light is way better than any like APS-C camera that you could probably yeah. buy right now. So 
I mean, that would be a solid kit, kit for Canon. If you're a Fuji person, X-T4, 16 to 55. Um, that's a, about the same price. I would buy them used, obviously, but you could definitely go with that setup. That's a crazy good setup. Um, and then Sony, I'm not a huge... Like, if you're doing photography, A7 IV is probably a great camera, but I feel like you could go A7 R3 or A7 R4 for the same, if not cheaper, price point, and you have better resolution, so you can crop more if you need to and all that stuff. Autofocus is just as good. Um, I rented the R4 before I bought the uh, S3 and stuff. Phenomenal camera. So no issues there. And then lens-wise, a lot of Sony people don't know, but the Sigma 24-70 f2.8 is sharper than the Sony G Master, and it's $1,000 cheaper. So that's where just splurging yeah. isn't always the best decision. I'd say for every, for every lens brand, for every camera company, Sigma makes quality glass for all of them. They don't make RF yet, so get on it. Yeah. Uh, that's probably Canon. That's Canon's fault. That's Canon, yeah. So, apologies, Sigma. But that wraps up today's... Uh, real Raw. Real Raw. Raw and no, Raw and Raw. Raw and Real. <laughs> real Raw. Just, <laughs> oh. All right. Raw and Real. <laughs> See you guys in the next one. Oh, there goes my head. Cheers.